In this video, we're going to be putting together a micro x86 compute module powered gaming machine that outperforms the Steam Deck. And for this, we're going to be using the all new Latte Panda Mu. And I definitely wanted to get that Steam Deck experience out of it. So we're going to be using Bazai OS. This is the all new Latte Panda Mu N305. It's actually one of the smallest x86 PCs on the market. And this upgraded version does pack quite a lot of performance when you compare it to the original Mu. With that one, we only got the Intel N100 with four cores, four threads. But with the newly upgraded version, they've added the Intel i3 N305. So we get eight cores, eight threads, and 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight with the original. Since we're working with an x86 compute module, we will need some type of IO board or carrier board. I've got the primer carrier board here, and with this we do get USB 3, Ethernet, USB 2, full-size HDMI, power inputs, barrel jack, or USB Type-C. We've also got two M.2 slots, one's a key E for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and of course we've got a PCIe slot here for a GPU, and that's really what's going to turn this into a gaming machine. It's only a PCIe X4 slot, but I've got a card in mind that'll work perfectly with Bazai or something similar to SteamOS. And I will be running the operating system from this 1TB 2230M.2 SSD, so I'll go ahead and get that installed. And if you're interested in checking out Bazai on your own machine, I'll leave a link in the description. But now we need to go ahead and install the Latte Panda Mu. Super easy with these carrier boards. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the fan. They do sell a passively cooled heatsink for this, but I've got the active with the built-in fan so we can take that TDP up. And now that I've got all of this situated, it's time to install our GPU. Now there's one thing to note about this board here. We've got a PCIe X4 slot. This is only gonna be available using a 12 volt DC power adapter. So I've actually got an 85 watt power adapter that I can use here, and it's gonna be more than enough for the card choice and the CPU, because with this setup here, I did need to go with an AMD card so everything properly works inside of Bazai. I went with the RX 6400 low profile. So we don't need any extra power to the card here. All we'll need to do is plug in our barrel jack, and that'll send power to the GPU over that PCIe slot. The RX 6400 GPU is an X4 card, but it's an X4 4.0 card, so we will be losing a little bit, but through my testing so far, we haven't lost that much using a system like this, and I'd say this is one of the best choices. You could definitely go with something that's way overpowered and get better performance, but it's only going to be up to a certain point because we will be limited by the CPU. But now that I've got everything together, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. Looking like everything's actually working pretty decent here. And I did find out something really interesting from our menu over here in Bazai. If I go down to our TDP limit, it's actually right here and this works. It's pretty awesome that I'm able to control the TDP directly from here on the N305. Now it's never gonna hit 43 Watts, even if I was using the iGPU in all eight cores, usually it goes up to around 28. But given the fact that we can go from that 15 on up is really great. Manual GPU clock is not working with the RX 6400, but you know, it's going to work like it should. Uh, and with this, I mean, we've got access to everything that we do with the Steam Deck. I've got my frame limit here. We can set up our overlay. So we've got that overlay showing us everything we need to know about this system. And uh, let me actually turn this down just a bit. We'll bring it back up when we get into gaming. But I did want to show you from our settings, system. Intel i3 N305 up to 3.8, and I actually haven't seen this hit 3.8. On all eight cores here with this Linux variant and the wattage up as high as we can go with it, we can only hit three gigahertz on all cores, or you can get a boost on one up to 3.8 and then down from there when it boosts using a certain number of cores. But basically across the board, three gigahertz on all eight cores, 16 gigs of RAM, and of course, that AMD Radeon RX 6400. This card is definitely not the most powerful Radeon card on the market, but I do like this. The only drawback to the RX 6400, in my opinion, for small form factor builds, is the fact that we've only got four gigs of VRAM. If this shipped with eight, I could definitely recommend it a lot more, but with four gigs, we are kind of limited here, and some games do pop up a warning before we start telling us that we've only got four gigs of RAM. Again, if it was a six gig card, it'd be a lot different. But I was able to get into most of this stuff and play it. One game I couldn't get to work on this system was Street Fighter VI. It would load up almost into the game and then crash on me. I tried it about four or five times. I kind of gave up on it. 
But for the most part, this little thing can game, and it's actually way better than I thought it would be. The first game I wanted to show here was God of War Ragnarok, and this is one of those games that did give me a warning when I started it up. It just told me, hey, you've only got four gigs, you might not get great performance. But with the settings I'm using right now, 1080p, low settings, FSR set to balanced, and AMD's frame gen, you can see we're up in the hundreds with this. It does dip down to around 82 on average, but overall it was pretty playable. I actually thought we'd just run into a bunch of stuttering, but really what's saving us here is AMD's frame generation. On this RX 6400, you're going to be hard pressed to play this without any kind of frame gen. Even going down to around 900p, we're not going to see these kind of averages. You can get over 60 with it, but with frame gen enabled, it's almost going to double our FPS here. But the next one I tested here didn't fare so well, and right now what you're looking at is 900p medium. I also tested low 720p, I tested high, and across from low up to high, I was seeing around the same frame rate, which kind of leads me to believe that we're limited by the CPU, and I knew we'd run into this with a few games. It's not pegging our cores out at 100%, but if I was to add this RX 6400 to a more powerful CPU, we could definitely get 60 at 900p low settings. But with this, we just can't scrape 60 with it. Here's Spider-Man Remastered 1080 Medium with IGTI scaling set to quality. You can use FSR, but I do notice a nice bump when I use IGTI, especially in Linux with basically any AMD card. It doesn't degrade the picture quality that much, but it does give us a nice boost in performance. And with this, I mean, it's more than playable. As you can see, we're up over 100 FPS with this one. Here's Forza Horizon 5, and this just works so much better in Windows. Even the main menu just looks cleaner in Windows. I'm not exactly sure what they did here, but it's playable like it is. It's just not as much as we could get out of it if we were running a Windows machine with the same exact setup. Skyrim Special Edition, and you'll notice I've got those black bars on the side, and that's because when I download this through game mode in Bazai or, you know, something like Steam OS, it just thinks we're running it on the Steam Deck, so it goes to that preset. And I've tried everything from the config file to get this to up the resolution and quality. Same thing happens with Fallout 4, so just keep that in mind, at least right now in game mode, when you download this or Fallout 4, we'll default to those lower settings, but you can see it's really playable. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, medium settings with FSR frame gen. We just have to use it here unless you want to go way down with the settings. 720p low with FSR set to performance, then you can get over 60 with it. But if you want medium settings, you'll definitely have to enable that with the RX 6400 and this N305. But with it set up like this, it's not horrible. Now I will admit when there's a ton of explosions on screen, I did see it get real close to going under that 60 mark. But for the most part, we were seeing an average of around 67 FPS, which isn't horrible for a super tiny setup like this. So overall, yeah, we were able to run Bazai OS on the Latte Panda Mew with that N305 CPU and an RX 6400. If I was to throw a bigger card at this, let's say the RX 7600, just an 8 gig model, we could probably see better performance in everything that we tested. But keep in mind, we're still really going to be limited by that CPU. But this was just something that I wanted to test out, and I wouldn't run out and buy all of these parts to build a PC like this using the Latte Panda Mew. It was something that we could just throw together, and yeah, I mean, it definitely works out, but it's not the best little setup in the world. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you want to see this little thing running Windows with an RTX 4060, I did make a video. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. That's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.